my name is Sinara Spiana. I um, will be your moderator for uh, accompanying you in this webinar. So total we have 10 presenters and as you already know that we have a theme for this webinar. Uh, the theme is teaching English through literature. So do you know what is literature? OK, uh, here some example. Can you see it? This is called literature because uh, this is a branch of literature such as a novel, uh, songs, dramas, and some things like that. OK, I will uh, introduce our presenter. So we have 10 presenters. I mean 10 presenters. The first presenter is Muhammad Fahri uh, with the title Literature and its History. So I will explain about the history of literature itself. OK, our second presenter is the beautiful one. Salma Samratul, uh, about what is literature for? Okay, and uh, the third presenter is Ariel Machahiani with the title Method for Teaching Literature. Of course, in, in, in the class and we're applying literature in the class. Our fourth presenter is Rani Andriani with the title The Effectiveness of Using Literature. And our next presenter is Jihan Rahmi with the title fun learning activity with literature so it will be very interesting to take or to bring literature to the class and our sixth presenter is Intan Anzila uh, bring the topic about literature for children and the seventh moderator is Mina Rahma uh, it's, it's a very interesting one because it will be explained about poetry poetry and its beauty and the second moderator, the second presenter is Hendriana with the title Why Digital Literacy Matters? Why? And uh, our ninth presenter is Muhammad Yula with the title Literature, The Way of Life. And our last presenter is Dimas Adisa with the title The Next Level of Literature. Okay, so before we move to the first presenter, I will explain several rules for this webinar. So we have a seven rules uh, for our webinar. OK, uh, the first rule is absence. OK, because uh, you will need a certificate after this webinar. So I ask you for typing your name and say present in the chat book. Chat uh, in up your phone. So for example, like this, you type Miros Liana present. OK, so we, we already know who is attending this webinar. And uh, this, the number two rule is do not do not stop the recording uh, because uh, we need the recording for our documentary and it seems like a part for our assessment. So do not touch anything and just listen to us carefully. OK, uh, the next rule is I told you earlier because this is oral presentation, so it's only oral presentation. So you you are uh i mean we have we have no written material such as pdf or a presentation slide we don't have uh, any written forms something like that and i suggest you because this is a lot of important uh, information from this webinar you can write down all of the points all of the important things you uh, you think that it's important uh, for you to write down so it's okay and uh, to all of the participants and presenters, if, if, if it's not your turn, so turn off the cameras and the audio, OK? Uh, we will not allow you to, uh, what is it? Turn on your camera and your audio. Please turn off. And the material will deliver in turn. So the material will deliver one by one. The first uh, material, the first presenter, the second speakers, and uh, go on until our last presenter. And the most important is Q and A session. If you have any question for this webinar, you can type it on the chat box. OK, you can type it. For example, uh, I have a question for the first speakers. And you can uh, you could say the name or the uh, the number of the presenter itself. OK, for example, I have a question for a uh, first presenter. What is literature? Uh, what is literature for? Something like that. And because the time is limited, so we only accept two questions. And if you uh, if you are still get curious about uh, uh, the, the answer, so we will contact you via email. And uh, I think this uh, all of the rules I had delivered to you. And this is the time 
Okay, we will move to the first presenter. Muhammad Fahri, Literature and its History. Muhammad Fahri, please welcome. Time is yours. Hmm. Okay, uh, thank you moderator to give me a chance to give a chance to me to give a uh, material to you all. So I'm going to explain about the literature and its history. As you know, literature is something that written or spoken. But if until literature and writing have a connection, there's no similarity with it due to the fact that uh, the ancient literature is Harold Lip and Simon Chinese you know, Herodip, Herodip in ancient Egypt, it was the ancient era. Then, the new era is the new ancient. This is the first time human writing in stone and paper. In this era, people only, maybe all of them, usually write or mind, read their mind, as uh, we know as philosophy, the example in ancient Greek. And also, Drama has been invented since before Christ. So, in there, drama is used for what is it like debating. Nah. The English era also, we found the largest ancient library, as we know as Library of Alexandria. And then next to the next era, in this era, as we call the medieval era. Okay. In this era, the medieval era. It is all about uh, a, a people write their what is it? Uh, write about uh, religion and culture. Like example in Europe with the Christianity, like example of Babel. In Middle East, especially Arab, in in where Islam was developed, like example Quran, Hadith, and Kitab of uh, Miraj. And also in India with the Hinduism and Japan in with Shinto culture. And then we next to the Renaissance era. As we know, before the as you know, in medieval era, everything has been written with hand, like uh, using tin and paper. Now in this Renaissance era, this is a big innovation that maybe changed the literature forever. The human have already invented the press printer. Yeah, printer. And also in this era, it's all about poetry, full of poetry about love, romance, and many more. And the next, we next the next era, as we call the early modern era. In this era, the novel was first invented and it became more popular in the next century. And also in the and also created the the famous the famous writer as we know like example William Shakespeare and also William Shakespeare now in this era also literature has changed change as entertainment purpose like example drama drama yeah and many more in the in drama also they have they made a new role it's a comedic role uh, example like people dress up as a jester or clown. And also, the female role has been played by men. Nah. In the, also, in this era, in this era also, uh, make a metaphysical movement, like about gods, yeah, legend, and minimal. And we next to the modern period. In this period, Gothic, you know Gothic about monsters and more. This has been invented. And also have uh, created the modern writer, like example Hans Christian Andersen, Charles Dixon, and many more. But in this era, there's uh, no much any what is it um, development because the outbreak of World War One and World War Two. Nah, and the next development is the 1980. The new writer like about the story, as you know, you know the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and Harry Potter. Nah, industry has invented, and also 
human has a uh, made uh, invented make a new concept about mechanical uh, yeah mathematics as we know computer and these are also invented the new kind of literature as we know about digital literature that's still invented and still developed until now thank you everyone i'm back again to the moderator Okay, thank you so much for explanation. It's very great to know about the history of literature itself. So we already know about the development of uh, literature from the poetry. It's only poetry and now we have a lot of branches of literature such as novel, drama, and it, it's like a bigger development until now. Okay, we will move to the next topic. It's about what is literature for? What's for? It will be answered by Salma Samratul. Salma Samratul, please welcome. Time is yours. Okay, thank you to the moderator who gave me the time and thank you to the first speaker uh, for his material. And now you join with me, Salma Samratul Wahida, in webinar series at Sound Seal 2020. And I hope you can enjoy my presentation with the topic, what is literature for? What is lit literature for is a kind of the benefits for from uh, literature itself. So before knowing the benefits, uh, let's take a look to the definition of literature. Literature is a uh, works of art, mostly written, uh, mostly in written form and uh, sometimes spoken material and commonly used to refer to work of the creative imagination such as poetry, drama, fiction, non-fiction, and so on. Now, in this occasion, I will explore the benefits of literature, especially for teaching English. First, literature improves your common of language. Why? Because the students uh, in literature, they provide uh, a wide range for students, provide the example uh, of uh, writing style, make the students familiar with many features of written language, uh, uh, as stated by Sidhu and Safidu, they said that literature unconsciously enhance students' uh, overall linguistic competence, such as syntax, morphology, semantic, and phonetic. And literature also is a representation of various authentic uses of language. And second, according to Tasnir, literature is a very enjoyable resource to learn a language. In this case, uh, the teacher must be able to find the right method to use in the class, so it can make the students learn comfortably and pleasantly. And the third, uh, literature import meaningful context of curriculum. When the students learn literature based on the curriculum, they are able to put historical facts, figures, and even uh, from the textbook into content. And they can make an exciting discussion. And also it can be the, their way to practice their critical thinking. And fourth, uh, literature is, is a source for every particular thing. Uh, as stated by Ko in 2002, he noted that children's books are multifunction. It means that we can get know uh, so many things from literature, and also literature have uh, uh, to help the students uh, to find the new ideas and knowledge. Uh, they can help the students to see something happen in the real world, uh, give the student information about the other part of the world. For example, various cultures from different countries. Uh, with the literature, uh, it helped the students to understanding the concept from it. And it can help them to uh, know 
to learn the issues, the social issues or values in life. It can help the student to increase awareness of human situation and conflicts. And the last, literature expand uh, students' vocabulary and improve their ability to write. For example, when they read the narrative text, they will find new word, new vocabulary, new sentence pattern, uh, idiom or figurative language. They will curious about it. They will looking for the information about it. And finally, they will want to learn about it. That's all of my material. I hope you guys can get the new information from me. Thank you for your kind attention. And I return it to the moderator. Oh, thank you so much. That's a great explanation about the benefit of literature itself. So we already know about the top, the basic topic, the basic uh, materials about literature. And the second, we already know about what is the benefit of literature itself. And then we will move to the next topic. It's about method for teaching literature. Uh, this is kind of like applying literature to the class. And what's method? It's suitable for the student itself. Okay, please welcome Adil Machahyani. Time is yours. Thanks to the moderator who has given me the times. And hello everyone, I'm Adil Machayani. Thanks for stay tuned on our webinar. My topic is method for teaching literature. Before going to our topic, let's know about what does language teaching mean? Language teaching means uh, teaching the skills. It involves listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And teaching the system, it involves it involve, um, vocabulary and grammar. And now let's discuss about the method of language teaching. We can divide into three periods. For the first is early to mid 20th century. For the second is 19, 1970 to 1980. For the last is 1980 to the present. And for the first period is uh, early to mid 20th century. There are probably two methods in this period. Those are grammar translation method, the direct method, and the audio lingual method. For the first method is a grammar translation method. Grammar translation method is a method for language teaching that use grammar and translation as the main teaching and learning activities. This method is focused on the reading and writing rather than speaking and listening. Uh, especially memorizing the grammatical rules. There is an emphasis on listening and speaking and speaking uh, comprehensions. Uh, there are also the plots of this method. Those are translation of the literary passage, reading comprehension questions, and the grammatical rules are taught dedicatedly by using presentations. And the next method is direct methods. The direct method was developed as response as a grammar translation method. This method is focused on the oral communications, on the oral communications. The listening and speaking are tough, and the grammatical rules are tough indicatively. And uh, there are three uh, there are three methods that usually used in the direct method. Those are the Rousseau's method. The Rousseau's method that the method which focus on the listening and speaking rather than reading and writing. In this method, uh, the teacher should uh, give the help the students by using drama and another creative actions to convey the meaning, to convey the meaning and to help the students to learn the target language. And for the next uh, method is TPR. TPR means total physical response. TPR usually using pictures and our body language to convey the meaning in the target language. And for the last method is TPRS. TPRS means teaching proficiency to reading and storytelling. This method is combining between the previous method that I mentioned before. And this method is mixtures between reading and the storytelling. So uh, the teacher help the students help the students to learn the to learn the
target language by using reading and storytelling. And the last method in this period is the audio lingual method. The audio lingual method is the method which uh, focus on the listening and speaking. And the grammatical rules are tough through communication, through dialogue. And for the second period is 1970 to 1980. Uh, there are pro there is probably one method in this period that is the the silent way. The silent way is a method for language teaching that based on uh, the ideas. So the teacher have to be silent as much as possible during learning process, and the learners have to speak up as much as possible during the learning process. And the last uh, period is 1980 to the present. There are so many methods here, but I mentioned one of them. That is CLT. CLT means communicative language teaching. CLT is a method for language teaching that emphasize, that emphasize on the oral communications uh, in the language learning process. This is focused on the oral communications and on the students communicating real message. And that's all from me. Thanks for your kind attentions. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So we back to our moderator today. Awesome, it's so great to know about the method for teaching literature if you have a dream in the future for being a teacher. It will be a great opportunity to listen to us because uh, we will talk a lot about a teacher. And for the participants, are you still there? Uh, please stay tuned and stay sit on your uh, on your chair because we have a seven presenter and we will move to the next presenter, Rani Andriani, with the topic, the effectiveness of using literature in EFL class or English foreign language. Rani Andriani, please welcome. Time is yours. All right, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the moderator who has given me time to deliver my material that's about the effectiveness of using literature in EFL. And I'd like to say thank you to all of the audience who has joined this webinar. I, I hope you guys will uh, enjoy this webinar and uh, get the point from what will I say today. Talking about English that nowadays has become a teach a teaching cross globe uh, that most of the country in the world has learned and teach about this language. And uh, to, because of that, uh, many te many teachers and researchers that try to find the new method to make the students easier to learn the new language especially English. One of the ways is use, using uh, literature. Because when we learned about the new language, we need to know uh, the new, I mean, the basic knowledge about the language, such as the basic vocabulary, the basic uh, structure, and it will achieve by we use uh, literature into classroom. For example, uh, when we try to give a stories to the children. The children will, I mean, the students will learn about the basic grammar. Uh, I mean, the basic vocabulary, the basic structure from the stories. And with with the aid of the stories, it will gain their uh, literacy skill and also their what is that critical thinking, and it will very good for help the learners to learn about the new language. And then, uh, moreover, uh, using literature into EFL classroom, I mean into language classroom, is very effective because, as I said before, that by using literature, we can, can give the basic knowledge uh, for the, the students that uh, help helpful for the, the students that learned about the language. And then uh, using literature, it's very relevant to the students' life because 
uh, yeah, it's very uh, relate to the student's life. And then literature is more relate to the young learners' cognitive. So now I'd like to mention some advantages that we will get if we use literature into EFL classroom. The first is uh, with using literature, we can uh, make the learning process more memorable. As Lazar in 1993 discussed that uh, literature provide meaningful and memorable processing and interpreting language. And then the second is uh, literature could make the material more visible because literature is about, I mean, most of the literature is about, uh, what is that, uh, experience and then imaginations and it will more relate to the student's life and the students will more enjoy the, the classroom, they more enjoy the learning process. And then the next, is literature could accommodate AFL students' uh, reading habit and uh, ability levels. So, because literature is most, uh, I mean, most of literature is about uh, reading, about text. So, the students will more usual to read, whether it is a story, article, or novel, and it will increase their reading skill. And then the fourth is with use literature, it will increase their, what is that, critical thinking. So when uh, the learners more usual to read, uh, what is that, the book or novel or article, it will increase their uh, critical thinking because when they read uh, many questions that will uh, appear in their, in their mind. All right, I think that's all for me. I beg it to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, it's amazing to know about the effectiveness of using the tattoo in the upper classroom. And I think uh, like sounds weird, like uh, is it that will be fun? When we apply it uh, in class, it will be boring, such as like uh, reading Harry Potter's book. It will be like, uh, you know, the time is very limited. And how to make uh, it fun when uh, I'm in during teaching literature in the class. So it will be answered by the our next uh, speakers, Jihan Rahmi, with the title Fun Learning Activity with Literature. Jihan Rahmi, please welcome. Time is yours. Hi everyone, um, I'm Jihara Misomantri. Okay, thank you for joining our webinar today. So I hope that you all of guys in the great connection. And before we move to our deeper discussion, we have to know the first, the basic thing we have to know is what is literature. Any method or approach toward using literature in the classroom must take as a starting point question. What is literature? Literature is a story, poems, and play, and those are considered to have a value and not just for the entertainment. According to Macmillan Publisher, Macmillan Publisher, I mean, 2003. There have been different models that suggested on the teaching the literature in the classroom. So. According to Care, uh, Care, Carter, and Long and Lazar, and it says that in the books that there are there's three models that can we use in the literature classroom. The first is the cultural models, and the second is the language model, and the third is the personal growth. And we have to explore more about it. And I believe that each model can create a fun activity in the literature classroom for the students. And we, we move to the next material. We will talk about more about the models. The first model is the cultural models. Uh, the cultural models view a literature as literature as a product product. So they more explore about social, political, historical background of the text or the of the literature or the literature or anything. And 
the activity can be variety and it can create such fun activity like a poster review. I believe that all of you know a poster review. The learner and the student can create their own poster as they want. They can make they can make a beautiful poster one and make it like an exhibition in the classroom and the other learners or the other student can take a look and read uh, which one they are interested inter interest one so i believe that it can gain more confidence it can gain more their opinion it can gain more their interest and creativity with these models and we will move to the second models the second models is the language model this model more learner center so this method explore about structure and vocabulary grammar and analysis some students might find it really boring or it's really hard because some of them tend to not really get along with the grammar or with that kind of thing so you you have to make it a fun in in order to the student can get fun and can learn too in the same time in the same time so the example of this activity is a game guessing game guessing or correcting game so i believe that all of you have been tried before or i have been heard before about the game guessing or correcting so i hope that you can really connect it and the game guessing is kind of game that it's a activity but at the same time you you can learn about the grammar analysis uh vocabulary and many more that really really focus into literature or written of literature and the aim of this model is to help learner to read and study literature more competently so i believe that some of you can make it really fun with a game and we will move to the next model or the last model is the personal growth model this one model is this model is really interesting to talk about because this model is more learner center and the model encourage learner to draw on their opinions feelings and personal experiences so the example of literature for this model or you can create a uh, activity is there's several activity for the first is writing acti activity writing activity it's like about the learner or the student can create a poem short story article that based on their personal feeling and personal experiences and anything that related to themselves because these models explore about their opinions feelings and personal experiences so and it can help the student to gain more confidence to write their own story to to make their own literature so i believe that it really must be a fun activity and we will move to the next activity that can create based on the personal growth is the literature circles and books club this one is really rare in, in indonesia or in our education system because it's mostly adopted in from its origin from the western or the uh, out, uh, outside of this country so i believe that if you can create this activity in the literature classroom you can make the learner or the student gain more interest with literature more because this literature circles and book clubs is really interest interest for the student they can choose with which one they really enjoy a books or a genre or anything that really related to literature and the books they really enjoy they can sharing with their friends too so i believe that this will be a very fun activity to create in the classroom or a literature classroom and in order to make it happen or in order to make it a fun activity you have to remember remember one thing it's useless if you make it if you use these models but you don't choose the right book for the student or the learner so you have to choose a right book in order to make it happen to make it a fun creativity according or or according to their age and their com compar com comprehension so i believe that all of you have to 
choose the right book for the learner, for the student, uh, according to their age, their comprehension, and their understanding about the books and about the literature. And if that's if you choose the right book, right book, I believe that all of you can create a really fun activity. And that's, there's a one great saying that I really like about the literature that I got from the one of the movie. I believe that all of you have been watches before the greatest showman so after i heard this saying i really gaining more interest into literature that's why i'm here so there's they're saying that literature is one of the most interesting and significant significant expression of humanity that say by pt barnum so i hope that you can um, hear it from their from your learner from your students and they gain more interest and in literature more so i believe that after you all heard this information, you can create a really fun activity with your students in the literature classroom. Thank you. For me, maybe enough. And whether, wherever you are, I hope that you always stay healthy, stay safe, and always keep a social distancing. Thank you. We'll be back to a uh, moderator. Okay, thank you so much for explanation. It's such as a great information for us to know about the activities in classroom. And I believe that literature was being helped in the classroom. Fun activities uh, do you still remember when you are in senior high school? Uh, our teacher always like playing a song and we like uh, fill the blank. Okay, to know about the lyrics. And uh, the most important in this university, I think uh, it will be fun if we are can uh, watching movies together in the class, uh, especially when lecturer or teacher give us some candies or some snack. It will be a very beautiful. And uh, because the literature is uh, must be suitable with the age. So uh, okay, we will move to the next presenter, uh, literature for children. Is it impossible for children using? Uh, literature in the class. Okay, it will be answered by Intan and Zila. Intan and Zila, please welcome. Time is short. All right, thank you for the time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. Let's move on to the topic about literature for children with me, Intan and Zila. Uh, all right, what actually literature is? Uh, okay, I think uh, the definition of literature already explained uh, by Salma before, uh, but I will add some about literature. All right, literature is a term used to describe written and sometimes spoken material uh, derived from the Latin word uh, literature, meaning writing form with letters. Uh, literature most commonly refers to works of the creative imagination, uh, including poetry, drama, fiction, uh, and then nonfiction, and in some instance, uh, journalism and so on. Then, uh, started by uh, started by Panuti Sujiman, uh, 1986, uh, literature is an uh, oral or written work that has various characteristic features, such as originality, uh, artistry, beauty in the content, and expression. Yeah, I agree with that statement because uh, my character, uh, because many character uh, characteristic features of literature, and I think uh, the Greek literature is simply language with the meaning is easy to understand, especially uh, literature for children. Uh, and then the simply put, literature represents. Uh, the culture and uh, tradition of a language uh, or a people that has many features of literature. And it's clear that the, uh, the, the accepted uh, definition of literature is constantly changing and evolving. So how is literature in the lips of children? Yeah, literature serves children in four major ways. It helps, uh, it helps them to better understand themselves and then uh, understand each other, their world, and uh, the aesthetic values uh, of written language. Uh, when children read a book about fiction or poetry or biography, uh, they often assume the role uh, of one of the characters. Uh, when children assume the role of a book's character as they read, 
uh, they interact vicariously with uh, the other characteristics portrayed in that particular selection. Uh, in the process, in the process, they learn something about the nature of behavior and the consequences of personal interaction. Uh, in one sense, they become aware of similarities and differences among, uh, among people. Uh, books can figuratively uh, transport readers across time uh, and, and space. Uh, other, place, other places in time, past, present, or future invite children exploration. Uh, because of that exploration, um, children come to better understand the world in which they live and their own relationship to it. Uh, oh yeah, the differences of literature for children and adults uh, is different. Uh, for example, for uh, children literature that use is simple and easy to understand words, but uh, literature for adults is more mature in content and more complex. So uh, the conclusion is uh, written language in its literary uses is an instrument of uh, artistic, artistic uh, expression. Through prose, poetry, or any features of literature, children can explore the versatility of the written word and learn to master uh, its depth of meaning. Uh, through literature too, uh, children can move beyond the outer edges of reality and place themselves in words of make-believe and fettered by the constraints of everyday life. All right, I think that's all for me. Thanks for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So we're back to our moderator today. Wow, it's so fantastic to know about that children can learn about literature and it's depend on the age and it's depend on their material. Uh, it sounds like impossible. When you give them such as Harry Potter books to the kindergarten, it's totally impossible. Okay, and we will move to the next topic and it's catch my eyes because the topic is very interesting. This is about poetry, poetry and his beauty. And uh, this is well delivered by Mina Rahma. Mina Rahma, please welcome, time is yours. Okay, thank you, Mia. The rose is red, the violets blue. For five minutes ahead, I will accompany you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mina Rahma Azizah. As I said before, I will accompany you with my presentation entitled Poetry and Its Beauty. Thanks for keeping stay tuned and please enjoy it. Before we start, I'm going to divide the presentation into two sections. The first section is the definition of poetry and the second one is the elements that cause poetry become beauty. Well, let's start with the first section. <clears throat> poetry is beautiful because it's created with the most attentive instances of our minds. It's appealing because the most of poems mean to be read by others. Sayuti, 2008. A state that poetry is a form of language expression that takes into account the aspect of the sounds in it, which expresses the imaginative, emotional, and intellectual experience of the poet drawn from his individual and social life, expressed by a certain choice of techniques so it can evoke certain experience in reader or audience. <clears throat> poetry itself is actually derived from uh, poesies are creating. Um, it's consist it consisting of two things, namely the body and the spirit. The body of poetry can be interpreted as the synthetically, and in the spirit can be interpreted as the <clears throat> as the semantically. Well, uh, from the explanation above, I will explain the. The second section is about the element that makes poetry become beauty. The first is the synthetic element in poetry. Number one is diction. <clears throat> Bearfield states that diction is a word chosen and arranged in such a way to be a such a way to mean uh, to cause or intended to cause an aesthetic image, then it the result is the poetic diction. Uh, <clears throat> it means that choosing the right 
words in the putri can make a good putri. The second is imagery. Nurshal state that putri <coughs> that putik um that imagery as a putik device that refers to the senses of experience in order to make the reader participate in the poem. <coughs> participate here means that uh, the reader can imagine what is said in the poetry and the third is concrete word concrete here means that it refers to the object and events that are available to the senses such as to sight smell touch taste and hearing <clears throat> number four is figurative language figurative of speech in that dominates in a literary work such as poetry it's a metaphor <clears throat> Basically, metaphors are created on basic of similarity of two things or term. Similar similarity here can be the same of shape or physical form, the characters, or even the similarity of perception. Then the next is the semantic elements of poetry. Number one is the theme. The themes uh, become important in poetry because it tells about the outline in the poetry. <clears throat> the second one is feeling. Beautiful poetry doesn't always talk about love and happiness because uh, talking about the sadness and pain can also make poetry become beauty. Uh, because the important one is delivery of deep meaning in the poetry and mood. The right poetry reading can make the reader listener or the reader enjoy the contents of the poem so it can make the reader and the audience understand the beauty of poetry easily and the fourth is the message and our moral value the message is very important in poetry because as we know that in poetry there are always things that want to be conveyed to the reader and the audience as a result, beautiful in poetry is mean uh, that the poetry can touch the feelings of the reader and the audience. Also, if the listener and the audience can feel the meaning of the poem so, uh, through those elements, as I said before, it can be said that they have been succeed, succeeded in understanding the true beauty of poetry. Thank you. Back to Mia. Oh, it's fantastic. And how about the poetry itself? Like, I agree with you that poetry, what makes poetry beautiful is the willing and the diction. Word choices, it's very important for building a poetry itself. Okay, participant, hello, are you still there? Do not sleep, okay. We still have three presenters and it concludes about uh, 15 minutes, so stay tuned. Uh, we will move to the next presenter, is Andriana. Why digital literacy matters? Why? Why not? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a wrong uh, answer. So we will uh, go ahead to Hendriana. Hendriana, please welcome. Time is yours. All right. Thank you for the moderator. So how you doing, guys? I hope you stay in a good and healthy condition. In this occasion, I'm Henry. I would like to share you and invite you guys to discuss about why digital literacy is really matter. As we know that today we live in digital age, so everything become digitalized. Think about we live now, uh, from get out of bed till we going to bed again, we always using digital tools. So almost every day, every time, in every condition, we always using digital tools. But did you know that in this day, it's not the right time for us to only knowing how to use digital tools, but this is the right time for us to more digital literate. So what does that mean? Digital literate or digital literacy is a form of using digital critically. So why we should do that? The first, the first reason, while we searching online to get new information or to get sources or evidence for your academic purposes, we have to uh, be careful about the information because, because on the internet isn't only provide the true things, 
but the internet is also contains hoax, false information, and even propaganda. So we have to consider the credibility and the trustworthy of the web. And we also can try more dig the information from another website and another uh, institution on the internet. We also can uh, play different stream or we can uh, use a different searching engine. Why? Because when we use a various searching engine, we can look how the result will be different and we can find out the language style is different. As David Crystal said, he is a British linguist. He said that uh, the website or the internet is always changing the language. So from that various language style, we indirectly can learn from it. And the second reason is when we scrolling our Instagram or our uh, social media institution, we have to also be careful to the information because in the social media is also contain the negative side. For example, such as uh, hoaxes, uh, propaganda, of course, and virus or ransomware. So in this case, as educated people, we have to uh, critically evaluate the information. We have to filter it, the information and minimally then get involved to that kinds of issue. And the third reason, Liz Zeko said on, on TEDx Talks Copenhagen, he said that rather than student only consuming the internet or the media, but student is also can create something, can post something on the internet. But before getting to it, we have to be careful. Uh, we have to consider about uh, the effect or the influence that might be a cure when the student, when the society is look to our uh, posting or our creative. So our responsibility in this case is we have to always post something good. We have to always post something positive and say not to spreading hoaxes, spreading untrusted uh, news. And then staying safe online is also pretty necessary. What and how we, we do that. So we can stronger our passwords, something like that. And then never give our email address to untrusted institution, never give our ID number or verification code, something like that. And think about when we uh, doesn't concern to that kinds of problem, not only virus or ransomware, but also uh, another harmful cyber crime such fraud is also will uh, cure and damage our online life and even our real life. So in this time, we don't take it for granted. Maybe those, with, those thing is pretty simple, pretty little thing, but it can stimulate a huge aspect for our capability while using digital tools. So don't take it for granted. Let's do it right now because the little thing is start for the bigger one. I'm Hendriana. Thank you for uh, watching and back to moderator. Thank you. Marvelous. And so uh, it's uh, like a new thing to know about digital trust. Yes, we know that we live in digital era, so we need to use the technology wisely and do not trust uh, i mean do not believe easily to the information so it's like a one step to avoid the hoax can we move to uh, the next presenter is muhammadilla he will talk about what literature the way of life muhammadilla please welcome time is yours assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone, and thank you for the moderator for the uh, amazing introduction to all the audience. And I'm Muhammad Yula Hassan, and I'm here going to talk about the way of literature being bring in our life. So, as you know, that many people think literature is something that 
we always do in school or in the art show like poetry, novel, telling story, music, drama, or a combination between drama and mu musical dramas. For or it is also for your job. Nowadays, literature is not all about that. Maybe you spend your time about two or three hours for mm, watching TV, listening to radio, serving the web, read your friend's status, whether it's in Instagram or Twitter, chat with your friends on social media. And the digital itself now, not always as the media for teaching and learning process. Digital can be a facility for distance learner, for example, to study without having go to the lecture for a specific time to have a live lesson. It's important that we understand mm, its influence in everything we do. So when I'm speaking about literature with digital, that things about the way we all use digital technology in our life. So in a field of study, digital literacy is the ability to find, evaluate, and composes, composes I'm sorry, clear information through writing on the media from critical thinking and psychology to linguistics. So in digital literature, there are two things control who control it, and that is, of course, human and machine. So the form of digital literature, there are hypertext. You, when you are reading on the blog or Wikipedia, you will see this type of text with blue color text with the underline. So next is interactive fiction. It is usually applied in video game where the player or the readers must solve the mystery or develop the storyline. And of course, there will be a text conversation between the other character or non-player character. So the animation is also the part of digital literature in network fiction. And last is coding. It is making a computer program for problem solving such as mathematic online. I mean program like Excel and SPSS for statistics and online dictionary, writing tools, and many more. So literature it's not just for entertain us, but also can solve the problem by using our knowledge and making a program in a computer to be consumed by other people. So experience in digital digital technology is very important too because it's already influenced in everyday life. So because the time is limited, I will end my webinar here. Thank you and please back to the moderator. Wow, it's so awesome to know about the development of literature itself. It's something like we already know that literature is only like spoken or written. And now we all know that uh, literature is uh, more, more bigger than it such as like a digital literacy and some things like that. Okay, take a deep breath. And we will uh, move to the last presenter. This is Dimas Adisa, and he will explain about the next level of literature. Dimas Adisa, please welcome. Time is yours. Uh, okay, thanks for the moderator. Uh, hello, I am Dimas Adisa Suritama, and thanks for the first participant for joining us. I hope you enjoy uh, our session and I think I am the last presenter of this session. We have listened so, so much for the variety of literature from the previous presenter and I'm here to share about what the next level of literature or 
It is called digital literature. The first, what does it mean? Uh, is it digital literature? Is it a PDF file? No. Uh, PDF file has a file extension that just changes the form from a pa paper to a digital file. For example, uh, you can scan a book and you can convert it to your mobile phone or computer and etc. Uh, the first work of digital literature is or electronic literature was made by Christopher Stacy in 1952 uh, and it's called Love Letter. He was not a writer but he was a computer scientist that made a random name generator but the generator will show you the love letter and uh, j just one click. Uh, it was uh, so helpful rather than we should write a love letter and we should think what while writing. Digital literature is from a different form from a traditional literature. Traditional literature has a form like on paper such as poem, short story and etc. And then in digital literature have a more feature than the traditional one, for example. Uh, the traditional one, we can read the novel and, and we should uh, uh, imagine or visualize what happened in story. And in the digital literature, we can change the form to the pixel, movie and film. Uh, for example, this, there are so many movies that, that are lifted from a novel. Another example of digital literature is we can turn the story into the interactive, such as and video games. Uh, I won't say all video games are digital literature, but, but at some point there are so many games that, that have a story or it's called a visual novel. Uh, the games are focused on image, uh, sound and story. And we can get a different ending depending what we choose. Different with the traditional novel that just we just follow the story and get the one ending and there is no another ending. Uh, so basically, digital literature is a traditional literature. We could know such as printed text and how it adapt itself to more digital form. Uh, and it's attractive to for the reader or students and they could contribute to itself. So digital literature is a recent genre of literature in, in its constant transformation with uh, so much possibilities yet to be discovered. Me, Dimas, and Dimas, and and thank you. Uh, and then back to the moderator. Okay, thank you so much for explanation. It's very awesome to know about like uh, the time from the first uh, literature appears until now until the digital era and it's a very long journey uh, from the other itself okay hello listener are you still there okay so we will move to the q and a session okay uh, so we have we only have uh, i mean because time is limited so we only answer the question from the participant and you can type it on the chat box okay and do not forget to enter your name and your presence for your e certificate. Okay, let's see. Uh, I still have no accept the question. Okay, hello everyone. Are you still there? Not sleep. Remember that we are doing a seminar, not uh, hearing a podcast. Okay, but there's only like a a screenshot on uh, on the chat book. <laughs> I think it gets new to Skype. It's okay. Okay. Uh, is there any question for us? So we already uh, delivered a lot of topic. Total, uh, we have ten topic about literature itself. And okay. And we only accept. I mean, we only answer the question, and to whoever uh, not get answered for the question, we will send it to your email. Okay, there is no question. Okay, I think uh, there are a lot of people typing. Okay, it will be good if, uh, I mean, it will be good if you have a question and 
to whom you asking this question. For example, I asking the question for the second presenter, what is literature for? Something like that. Okay, it's uh, it's really good, and we will try to answer a question. Okay, let's see the chat box. Okay, still typing. I will wait. It's okay. It's very interesting to know about literature, right? Just like you know, it's uh, in digital era, they are still uh, available. I mean, like it's not uh, what is it? It's really still important. Just like animation, yeah, it's like a lot of people like it, and uh, web novel or something like that, yeah, because it's like a move or change because we are living in digital era. Okay, let's see. Oh, still. Still typing. Okay, I will wait. It's okay. I'm just glad that uh, I represent our group. Say thank you. Okay, we we accept a question. Oh, this is from uh, Miss Arini. The question is: How can we teach young learners using poetry? Give example. Young learners, I think this question is, uh, I mean, it's uh, suitable, like, it's uh, to our seventh presenter, uh, Mina Ziza, but it's okay. Uh, everyone can answer the question. So the question is, I will repeat the question. The question is, how can we teach young learners using poetry? For three to young learners, it will be fun. Yeah, and everyone's still typing. Okay. We accept one question again, and we will send it uh, another question. We will send it to your email. Okay. Okay, we are accept another question. This is from Tirsa. I want to ask about why digital literature matters, how to create digital content in a meaningful way. Okay. We have three presenters that present about, delivered about digital literacy. It will be related with the question. Okay, and the last question is from Serlia. How can social media, how social media can change our real life? I presenter and what method is the most effective to teach young learners? Oh, okay. So this is like two question uh, from Celia. The first question is how social media can change our real life? And the second question is, and what method is the most effective to teach young learners? For the third presenter, okay. For the eighth presenter and for the third presenter, Okay, I think uh, because the time is limited, so we will only answer from Miss Arini and from Tirsa. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, all of the presenter is all, uh, is ready to answer the question. Uh, please to to everyone who want to answer this question, turn on your cameras and turn on your audio. Okay, <laughs> hello. Uh, I will uh, try to answer by answering the Miss Arini question. And if I'm not mistaken, the the young learner can catch up the rhyme or the words very quick quickly. So I think that the we can use a poetry and as a media that can increase their rhyme and their vocabulary by reading out loud in the in front of classroom and and they can after they can understanding the the basic of reading out loud or i mean the how to read it or how to get a rhyme and go, in rhyme and words effectively they catch up really quickly so 
after reading out loud, they can create their own poetry by their own word that they're after the reading out loud, I think they can it can affect their minds or their words vocabulary or vocabulary dictionary in their minds. So I can I I think that they can use a poetry as a media to reading out loud the um, the poems and poetry I mean in front of the class and reading out loud and after that they can try to practice about their um, reading and uh, writing activity after the reading out loud of the poetry I think uh, by reading out loud it's really effective for young learner to to know about more rhyme and vocabulary by reading out loud of poetry I think that's all for the question of Miss Arini. Thank you. Okay, the first question is uh, answered already. That a lot of uh, what is it? A lot of ways to teach the children about the poetry itself. And I think like uh, the songs can be uh, included to the poetry because like song is part of poetry. I mean, uh, some of them like. I heard uh, a lot of like, you know, it's a uh, song is directed to poetry itself and it, I think it can be uh, the song uh, first. Okay, for the second question, we will be answered. I think uh, uh, to whoever who want to answer the question, please turn on your camera and your audio. Right. All right, I would like to answer the second question from Teresa. Yeah. So, in my opinion, uh, how we can create a meaningful digital content, I think on the internet environment, we create something, uh, some posting that such positive or such inspiring content for the society, not only for uh, young, young people, but also for all of the society. And not only kinds of the materials for uh, such in the school, but a lot of inspiring content that we can create nowadays. Not only such unnecessary thing, like in this uh, today's era, so many unnecessary things that, uh, for example, YouTuber <laughs> create. So as uh, educated people in this case, we have to yes, create something inspiring, not only such for academic purposes, but for something like music, something like uh, yeah, something like that is pretty necessary for nowadays. And I think the millennial in this case is pretty uh, dominated because they also have a lot of wide knowledge about using uh, technology and digital tools. So, uh, a meaningful content in this context is I think we can use uh, and posting a positive thing and inspiring content to everyone. Say not to spreading unnecessary thing. Maybe that's all for me and maybe uh, someone will add something. Okay, I think because the time is up, we still accept uh, a question. A question still appears, but I'm sorry that the time is up. So we will contact you via, via email and I will come to the conclusion for this webinar. So uh, the conclusion is literature. Okay, I'm sorry. There is still uh, a question appears, sorry, that uh, time is up and we will contact you via email. 
okay the conclusion is literature is the important thing in our life because uh, it's developed from the spoken and written and now it's from uh, it it being a digital it's very useful for us and especially to like the top related to our theme that teaching English through literature. So there are a lot of ways for teaching English, uh, for using literature to teach English uh, in the classroom to the student. There are a lot of ways and a lot of method for uh, the teacher uh, to give it, uh, I mean, to deliver it to the student. And we need to look at the appropriate one and to the stable one with the student. We need to think about the age. We need to think about the materials. We need to think uh, about the comprehensive capability and something like that. And a digital literacy is very matters because that in this digital era, we will like, uh, we always touch, touch in with uh, the technology. So we need to use the digital uh, wisely and uh, we need to like position ourselves uh, in the right uh, in the right position, and it means like uh, we need to take a lot of benefit from uh, the information information itself. Okay, I will come with the quotes uh, from Kirk Douglas: "The learning process continues until the day that you die." So it's uh, already correct that uh, I hope you. A uh, special listener can uh, take a lot of benefit from our webinar and. But I hope you, uh, you are not enough with us because you can search it by yourself. Okay, uh, I send uh, the biggest thank you and the biggest appreciate to all of the pre to, to all of the presenter and uh, especially to our beloved participant. Uh, uh, I think it it's enough from us. Stay at home, stay healthy. That we don't know uh, until when we stay at home. But uh, let's do not lose hope because uh, you know this uh, this kind of situation will go on. Soon. Okay, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You can uh, end this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I think.